do melang magareshu nagali nagen na chofajo maso otherwise known as chokeli and this is authentic african stories cheers hey hey basically a segment on my channel where I come out and I tell like the name says authentic African stories here we come out we talk about um, stories that are African that are not necessarily you know being told the way or in the capacity that I feel like they should our kings and our queens deserve more than they got so for this series, I'm going to be covering the kings and queens of Africa, at least the ones that I know of, and yeah, one step at a time. So um, so basically today I want to talk about Queen Mujaj. Really, we're going to Africa, we're going to go to Africa, we're going to go to the Limpopo province, 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 we're going to go to the Limpopo but um <laughs> i just wanted to flex <coughs> just wanted to show off just wanted to sprinkle sprinkles here and there <coughs> but basically that's what i'm going to be doing in today's episode i'm going to be covering the story of queen mujaji as someone who grew up more limpopo province i have um heard about queen mujaji I don't know from like a young age from since I was young all I knew about her is that Ronali a queen who is able who has the power to summon the rain and make it rain for her people so that her people don't starve so that the crops don't so that the, the crops grow so that they the, the, the you know her people have enough water supply so this is not just a queen this is not just a royal this is someone with the power to summon the rain this is someone with the power to summon the waters this is someone who has the power to control the clouds queen so i'm going to be divulging into that and we're going to look into the history of that we're going to look at um all of the queens so far we've had six queens six queen mujajis queen mujaji the first the second the third the fourth and the sixth and we are about to have our seventh queen uh come into her power or she's about to reign as well so we're going to look at their history we're going to look at how the whole queendom came about um we're going to look at how the matriarchal lineage is passed on from one generation to the next of course there are other royal secrets that we'll never know for example we don't know how the ritual is performed for them to summon the rain but i i'm just happy and i'm excited that i'll be able to tell you guys the story so without wasting any time let us get into it i'm gonna start by naming all six queens that have reigned and for how long they have reigned. We have so, Queen Musale Kwane Mujaji who has reigned from the 1800 to 1854. We have Queen Musala Nabo the first Mujaji who has reigned from 1854 to 1894. Then we have Queen Kesetwane Mujaji the third who has reigned from 1895 to 1959. Then we have Queen Makoma Mujaji who has reigned from 1959 to 1980 then we have queen mako queen mako sorry queen mukope mujaji the fifth who has reigned from 1981 to 2001 then we have queen makoba mujaji who has reigned from 2003 to 2005 and from 2005 to two to 2022 we had prince regent he was the prince he was regent, meaning he was just holding it for somebody else. This was Prince Regent Mpapata Mujaji, and he reigned from 2005 to 2022. And finally, we are about to crown our latest queen, which is Queen Musala Nabo II Mujaji, 
from 20 from august 2023 it will be her coronation and she will be officially crowned as the seventh queen of the Baluwedu kingdom we are talking about queen sineshapula we are talking about queen mujali now that we know who the six queens are now that we know who the six queens are, we need to understand how the que the royal crown ascends. So the crown ascends from like in a matrilineal lineage. That means the firstborn daughter of every queen will inherit the crown and will become the ruler of the Ebaluwedi people. She will also inherit the powers to become the queen to rule what we also need to understand is that the royal council also has a hand in selecting who will be the next queen that will rule over the Bulwedu people who will be the next queen that will inherit the power to make it rain another bizarre ritual that um this queendom had is that near their death the queen has to um poison themselves and unalive themselves so that they can pave a new path for the queen to rule peacefully apparently this is what the the the, the ancestors wanted this is what the ancestors recognized so the queen just as she oh, or if she realizes that she's near her death what she will do is she will ingest poison and she will unalive herself in order to make space or make way for the new queen to come and reign so now let's talk about the first ever queen mojaji that is queen muselekwani mojaji who is the first queen mojaji and she reigned from 1800 to 1854 So she is the direct descendant of the Monomotopa people from Great Zimbabwe. She is from a royal house of that particular chiefdom or kingdom. His great grandfather, or let me just say, yeah, his great grandfather was a king and he ruled over this people from at least from the 1400s to the late 1500s. So what happened was the chief son had an incestuous relationship with the daughter as she has this incestuous relationship an illegitimate illegitimate child was conceived through that relationship it was then seen as an abomination it was seen as an embarrassment and what happened was the princess at the time because they were brother and sisters and they had an incestuous relationship the princess at the time was the one who was banished from the from the kingdom initially the story goes that the king did not want to banish her daughter but because of the rumors that were spreading across the village because of everything else that was going on in the village he was then forced to banish her and she fled to what is now known as the Limpopo province of South Africa. She settled Africa. there. She settled um, in the what is now known as the Bulubedu Kingdom of the Limpopo province of South Africa. That's where she settled. At that time, the chief that was reigning over the village, the chief that was reigning over the kingdom was Chief Murodu. So Chief Murodu had a vision she he called it sorry i'm talking about females so i'm getting confused he um he had a vision and in his vision he was told by the ancestors that his sons would eventually plot against him and that his sons would want to overthrow him as the king of that particular village at the time so what did he decide to do he decided it was best that he killed all of his sons it is unclear as to how many sons he had but he decided to kill all of his sons because he was just not happy remember this is the man who married the lady who fled from zimbabwe he married her i think i forgot to mention that important detail he married her he unalived all of his sons 
and fortunately for him he also had a daughter with this woman and the daughter would be named Zungundini Zungundini I hope I'm pronouncing that correct I'm not of Nguni descent ke na mubedi ke le ka la phumga khogo bangwe ba phumga me go kotlo ke mubedi so si 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 Nguni si ampale khona go di pronounce ga botse Eh yeah so this man um had a child had children with Zungundin and out of those children sons were born and a daughter so he analyzed all of his sons because he had a vision that his sons would betray him his sons would plan to overthrow him from the kingdom and his sons would eventually kill him for um um his kingship so he decided to analyze all his sons and he also got a prophecy that his daughter is the one who will become the rainmaker as the story goes his son will now become i mean sorry his daughter will now become the rainmaker right so with zungundini the chief um decided to na- to 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 name their daughter um ruler of the day which translates to mujaji and that's how the first queen was made she was the first ever queen she was named mujaji ruler of day she would grow and she would grow to become a powerful powerful queen she ruled over the kingdom of the valubedi people at the time what is said about her is that she was very secluded she would go into the forest where she would perform her rituals her rain rituals where she would summon the rain where she had power over the clouds where she had power over the waters and ever since she reigned there was never drought in the village the people had water the people had food crops would grow and in as much as she was secluded and as she was reigning she went on to marry and have um several children towards the end of her life she ingested poison she ingested poison which would end her life almost immediately and she said that she is um making way for the next queen to come into um i'm 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 a royal i don't know what they call it but so that the next queen can success her queen musala nabo Mujaji went on to rule from 1854 to 1980. So not much is is as I was doing some digging not much is actually known about Queen Musala Nabo the first Queen Musala Nabo the first Mujaji. So what we know about her is that she ruled during the time where white people were becoming more aggressive with coming into power and they had little to no respect for the kings and queens that were ruling over the land all the time and they obviously we know the history of white people is that they um um you know they oppressed the black people they wanted to strip away the royalty that these people had so during the native relocation act general pidjubert um he would hunt down for her and eventually at some point it is alleged that she gave herself up um to general she was Pichu also Bear. known as a mysterious figure because she never really um um put herself out in public she never really went out to the public and she was hardly seen and she hardly made public appearance it is also believed that the person who gave herself up to general pichbert is not the actual queen is not actually the queen that was reigning at the time but a replica and that is what we know about her um what else we know nothing else about her it's just believed that a stand down a replica was sent to general pichbert to sacrifice herself for the queen to say that she to pretend like she is the then queen and at some point close to her death 
the ritual came to she ingested poison to make way for the committed ritual suicide in 1894 after she named lia kali as her the successor. third queen that came to rule is kesetwane munjaji she ruled from 1859 to 18 to 1959 yeah she ruled from 1859 to 1959 the third was the daughter of princess lia kali so lia kali was the sister to queen musala nabo the first she was also known as the great wife so i'm thinking she's the sister wife and because queen musala nabo never never um bared any children she named lia kali as her successor and kesetwani was then chosen by the royal councils to succeed Queen Musala now. Kesetwane was the daughter of um, Princess Lia Kali. Right? And she succeeded the, the, the queendom from Queen Musala Nabo Mujaji the, 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 the second. And she went on to become Kesetwane Mujaji. So Kese, uh, Queen Kesetwane was the longest reigning queen because she reigned for 64 years years that's a lot that's a lot she reigned for 64 years and she chose her daughter makoma to become his successor so kesetwani is believed to have cursed the queendom because she refused to die by a ritual suicide remember all the queens before her when it was just about time for their lives to end they would ingest poison commit ritual suicide to make way for the new queen now she is believed to have cursed the entire queendom by refusing to commit ritual suicide which is just i mean it's just bizarre if you ask me but that is all we know about that's all we know about queen queen kesetwan so now we move on to the fourth reign makoma mujaji the fourth who reigned from 1980 from 1905 to 1980 yeah she reigned from 1905 to 1980 So, um, not much is known about Queen Makoma as well, but we do know that she, when she was reigning as queen, she was reigning under the apartheid regime, which eventually would strip her of the title of queen and give her the title of chieftainess. I don't even know, like, bruh, <laughs> bruh. Anyway, they gave her the title of chieftainess and it was under her jurisdiction. Excuse me. It was under her jurisdiction that um, the Native Homelands Act was um, implemented. I mean, it was not... It was honestly, it was against her will. Remember, it was apartheid at the time and white people were very oppressive and they did not want black people to know who they are. They did not want black people to understand the power that they have. They did not want black people to know that they ascend from kings and queens. They did not want black people to know that they are royalty. So it was obviously against her will and the Native Homelands a um, Act was implemented. Let me just look at it. It was the Lewoa and Gazangul Homelands Act. And unfortunately, what is it was implemented under her rule. She went on to marry Andreas Marke and they went on to have several children until she also committed um, ritual suicide in 1980 she named her successor to be mukope mujaji the fifth who reigned from 1981 to 2000 and so um we know that princess muko i'm sorry we know that queen mukope was very um traditional in her role as the queen of the Baluedi people she remained secluded in the royal compounds she would go to the forest to perform rituals she followed the tradition to the T. She respected it, she understood it, and she implemented it. That is what we know about her. Um, we know that she also went on to have three more um, children. 
however she because it was during the time where the african national congress which was the 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 party that was you know coming into ruling position for the new democratic south africa at the time she did not believe that the african national congress would support her um, authority as a queen however she was mistaken because they did reinstate her her her, her rightful in uh, her, her rightful title which was queen she was no longer chief dinners but she was queen and they reinstated her title she went on to have three more children her successor McKay, princess michaela however um passed on two days before her mother queen mujaji the the the, the fifth passed on so princess michaela died um two two days before her mother died in 2001 and two days later her mother died and michaela's daughter was then named to be the successor she would now become the fifth queen to rule the Wulubedu kingdom she would now become the fifth she would now become queen mojaji the fifth and her name is makobo queen makobo queen makobo mojaji the fifth and she reigned from 2001 to 2003 so queen makobo was very 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 different from all the other queens she was at the time known to be the youngest queen to ever reign in the Bulubedu kingdom because she was 25 years old at the time she is also the shortest um her reign was very short-lived because she did not live long uh what made her different or what made her to stand out from all of the queens is that she was very educated she was educated she did not wear traditional clothes as often she did not really um practice the traditional you know uh um, rituals as often she was not very secluded like the queens before her she would be seen wearing jeans and a normal shirt she would be seen you know using technology watching television busy on her cell phone she would be seen in the nearby disco places and unfortunately that did not sit well with the royal council at the time unfortunately for her when she she fell in love with a commoner which is just very it's 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 not something that is what that was you know welcomed at the time because every queen that had reigned before her even though i did not mention the kings because in my opinion they're not even relevant they were there for procreation purposes but the the kings came from royal descent and the the, the kings were actually their cousins so they would marry within the family they would marry within the clan to keep the royal blood in the family because that was what was believed at that time and she married a commoner apparently she married some guy who was a municipal manager of Letaba region at the time and the guy was a commoner so obviously the guy was not welcomed by the royal council the guy was not welcomed by the royal family and she went on to have a baby with this child and in 2006 she unfortunately fell ill and she was admitted to the mediclinic hospital in Polokwani. um she was admitted and she passed on two days later the cause of her death is still unknown but there are conspiracy theories as to what caused her death um some some people believe that she was poisoned by the royal council because they did not approve of her relationship with the commoner some people believe that she died of a broken heart because she was not allowed to be in a relationship with this man that he that she had a child with they were not allowed to be together and the hospital staff that worked at Medi clinic at the time allegedly believed that she might have died from hiv and aids 
of which i'm very skeptical about that one because it it was i i understand it was 2006 but it, it did not kill unless if you were not taking your medications you were not taking your ARVs. hiv did not necessarily kill at the time it was more advanced and like it was in the 90s you know but um yeah the hospital staff believes that and unfortunately some strange sorry some strange sorry some strange circumstances <laughs> happened a day before her funeral um the, the 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 room that her casket was in before the burial the room went up in flames fortunately she could like uh her body was recovered she she did not burn up the the casket did not burn up and some people believe that that's just a sign to say that there was foul play involved in her death because she was young 2001 2002 2003 she was gone she did not live long enough to fully you know reign over her kingdom and it is believed that she did not really welcome uh her queendom because she wanted to live life she wanted to live life like an ordinary person she did not want to be royalty but that's that's just alleged and her lover who worked at the municipality her lover still believes that she was poisoned by the royal council because they did not want her to rule they did not believe her fit to rule because of the relationship that she had she did not get married to a guy who was within the royal space and they did not approve of that and she believes that he believes that she was poisoned anyway um her child queen musala nabo the second ke musala nabo the second mujaji the seventh queen musala nabo the second mujaji the seventh she was deemed to be too young to rule because she was still an infant at the time and um it is alleged that she was removed from that space because they were afraid that she was going to get murdered and it is alleged that she was removed from that space even though she later came back to her hometown to her royal um compound but she was still too young to rule and the brother of queen makova was then named as the regent king and his name was mpopoti mujaji mpopoti ruled from 2003 to 2022 and queen musala nabo just musala nabo the second just turned 18 recently um in 2023 and it is said that she is going to have her coronation um in august of this year so august 2023 she will be having her coronation and she will be officially named as the queen of the Bulubedu people she will be queen mujaji she just celebrated her 18th birthday in april 2023 and all of the important people that you might think of the president was there um the ministers were there everybody was there to celebrate her birthday and she will now be named the seventh queen of the Bulubedu people the seventh queen the seventh reign queen king queen musalana was the second mujaji the seventh and i for one am excited that this tradition is still ongoing it's still there it's still alive even up until this day okay um yeah that is all i have for you today from the authentic african stories if there's any king or queen that you would like for me to go into detail about that you want to know more about and you want me to do research on your behalf and tell their story please do let me know in the comment section down below and don't forget to like this video don't forget to share and this is authentic african stories i hope that you guys enjoyed take care and mwah.